Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? And you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and, and, and influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette, Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia. But guess what? Heard all across the world wide web. Listen, we are super excited to have you joining us here today. You know, I always have the intent to bring you phenomenal guests, and today is no different. So listen, let me tell you who we have on the show today. So starting the top of the hour out here, my guest is hanging out in the virtual green room, so I know he is enjoying some virtual snacks, ready to come up to the mic. We're going to be talking to Telvin Jeffries. He is a career transition uh, consultant. He does interview coaching for executives. He's a former chief human resources officer. He's interviewed thousands of people. And listen, he's here today. So if you're saying, I need a new career strategy, I need help with interviewing, uh, I just need some guidance, you want to keep it locked right here on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. And then listen, in our second segment, um, you don't want to move at all. We're going to be talking to Roosevelt uh, Sargent, and he has a brand new book out, Victorious Underdog. And I'm telling you what, uh, it's really a story that depicts his journey, uh, which was plagued with a lot of losing circumstances, but he was able to maintain an indestructible will to survive. Uh, so you got to hear all about it, so don't go anywhere. Matter of fact, Jump on Twitter, tell them what you're listening to. Jump on Facebook, tell them what you're listening to. Uh, Instagram, how y'all doing? Welcome those that are listening in from our mobile app. Hello, and those that are listening in from Charvette.com. We appreciate you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so we are jumping right on into our first segment here. Again, uh, business spotlight, helping you with your career, helping you if you want to uh, transition. Maybe you've lost a job and now you're finding yourself in uh, a place where you are having to interview and just figure out what the next steps are. Uh, you are in the right place. You're in the right place right here. So uh, Telvin is an international keynote speaker, uh, a seminar leader, a coach and consultant, uh, over a thousand speeches he's given a for nonprofits and corporations and conferences uh, and the like, and he's here to chat with us today. Aren't y'all, aren't y'all glad? Don't you feel privileged? Listen, we're bringing him up to the mic right now. Hello, Telvin. Welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hello, Charvette. Oh, right. We are glad to have you. Oh, we're glad to have you. Certainly, uh, it is an honor and a privilege. So let's let's jump in. How did you get your feet wet in the the world of HR? You know, I started uh, working for Best Products in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I know a lot of people know uh, if they know Best Products, but uh, it was a catalog retailer there, and uh, I worked on the sales floor and one day my manager came to me and said would you like to work in HR and uh, start interviewing people for new jobs and that's kind of how I started in HR really wasn't my intent Wow and here you are uh, some years later and still still in it still love it what is it that you like most about uh, the HR field you know there there are a couple things I mean I like people I think people are extremely interesting and I really like seeing people get what they want. You know that. Yeah. Um, you know we spend a lot of time um, working, and I think that space you should get lots of fulfillment in that. And I, you know, I like helping people achieve that because again, because we spend so much time doing it, and I think yeah. you should like it. And I mean, and it's a huge chunk of our time, a huge chunk of our life uh, when we boil it all down. If we just look at it from that that perspective, um, I love a quote that's on on your uh, your website that says, "Stop trying to perform and start uh, having amazing conversations." Talk a little bit about that. Well, I, you know that that comes from two different perspectives. I think all communication um, and especially in the workplace, sometimes the pressure to perform gets in the way of actually having 
an authentic one-on-one conversation, and that means not only telling what's on your mind or answering questions, but it's also asking questions. And I have found that um, sometimes we get a little confused. We think that people are more impressed with us when we give lots of information. But I have found that I have identified the smartest people by the people who ask the most questions and the most curious. And when I talk to um, hiring managers and I talk to um, people in human resources, one of the things that continues to be consistent from them Mm -hmm. is they had the best conversations or they were most impressed or they liked the person most that they had a dialogue where they asked questions and they got concise, you know, important answers that were meaningful to them. But on the flip side, they were also um, that person asked engaging questions and and it showed that they were interested. And so that's what I call an amazing conversation. It's two-way dialogue that there's questions on both sides. And I always say this one last point. It's important as an interview. E, the person doing mm-hmm. the interview, it's important for you to interview the company. Don't want that job that bad. More All right. than likely, it will end bad that so you haven't <laughs> asked great questions. Ask great questions. And what are examples, just, and I know this may be, uh, you know, a little bit hard to answer since there are different jobs and different levels and all that kind of thing, but any guidelines of the types of questions that should be asked uh, of a, a company that we're being interviewed by? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I, I think you, 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 you hit it right on the on the head. I mean, part of it is think through that company and the people who you're interviewing with. Um, but one of the things that I, I think is really important for people is to ask questions about culture, not the question mm. about, um, you know, and, and a lot of times when we have this conversation around culture, people get really lost in the meaning of that word. I say, how does work get done here? There's, oh, that's good. Right? Because we, we, we can really get excited about they do what I like to do. But the bigger question is how do they do it? Absolutely, because even if you go in and ask, well, specifically what is the culture, you will probably get something very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, there are a bunch uh, of I words like, that every other company yeah. says. But I want right. to know, like in this department or this division, how do we do work? How are decisions made? What, how do how are changes made? What, what do we do to keep um, everybody in the loop on how on the changes that are being made or the successes of the companies or the things that we need to work on or what's going on in the organization beyond my area? So, you know, it's not just the work that you do that you know how to do. I need to know how, that, how we do the work. And I find this a lot um, in when you're in a real technical field and then mm-hmm. people have a job mismatch because they go, oh, they know this company hires people who they do what I do. But there are other people yeah. who do what you do, but they don't do it that way. And that might be the place you should be. Oh, good advice and guidance already out the gate, out the gate. Welcome to all those that are, are tuning in. Hey, we see you, those that are hanging out on the phone lines. Welcome. Welcome those that are uh, tweeting us. Thank you. Thank you, Carla R. Jenkins from Washington, D.C. Thanks for the retweet there. Uh, you're checking out the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Uh, Talvin Jeffries is giving you some good nuggets and advice. So, Certainly, you have interviewed thousands of people. What what has changed over when from the time you started to now? What are like major changes that you see just in interviewing and and even career strategy and people trying to shift around? What are the major changes you're seeing? Okay, well, yeah, that, 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 there are a couple of things. I would say from the interviewing perspective, most of the time, uh, companies, recruiters, hiring managers have already pre vetted you. And there were days when they had a resume, and then there was no other way to figure out who you were. 
um, mm-hmm. without maybe calling a reference or that type of thing. But because we have the Internet, people Ooh. have, okay, people have already pre-vetted you. I say to people all the time, use your social for more than social, meaning your Facebook and your Twitter, for example, remember that those pictures that are Instagram, you may think you've blocked them, but those images are sitting somewhere and they're easily accessible if you Google them. So that interesting night that you had at that party, that picture's there. And recruiters know how to use that, and they do. They look for social proof. It's just like you and I, if we decided to, someone said, you should check out this product, the first thing we do is we Google it. Yeah. Well, that's what recruiters do. That's what hiring managers do. We all look for social proof. We've been trained to do that. Wow, the inside scoop. Yes, yes, keep moving. Yeah. I'm sorry. The second thing, I'm sorry, the second thing is LinkedIn. I am surprised by how many of us are not using LinkedIn. Um, and for LinkedIn, 80% of all recruiters will tell you that they actually find candidates for jobs on LinkedIn. So instead of applying for jobs, which is what I would call today in today's world the pray and spray mm-hmm. method, Right, And so I put out a bunch of resumes because I went to these job boards, and then I hope that they're going to call me, and they don't. And, we, and I want to talk about that in a second. But when, what ends up happening is if I go back to – if I use LinkedIn and I have a great LinkedIn profile that's written well, really marketing myself to the job space I want to be in – with a proper picture and with some accomplishments that I have, more than likely in today's space, because the market is so tough, the recruiters are going to find you. And so you don't wow. have to do as much work to get found if you're on LinkedIn. Oh, my goodness. Are there resources or things uh, for people that are saying, okay, I'm on LinkedIn, I don't really, I need to tighten up, or I haven't been on LinkedIn, I need to get on? Any resources you recommend or you have? Certainly, a couple things. One, I'd say the first thing is there are definitely some free sources and free resources. You can just Google um, LinkedIn profile tips, and there's some things out there. My company... Um, and you can find me out, um, I think it's at anamazingconversations.com. But we actually have certi- – I'm not, but we have on staff certified LinkedIn um, profile writers. And oh, they wow. are adept at writing keywords, making sure that it's presented. And it's a very – It's. I mean, it's really low cost. But – yeah, and, and I say I say to people, do that because they're specialized in that, and yeah. they can cut your search time down. But the other part, you know, when you talk about career strategy, career strategy today is should be all about always looking, always be looking for a job. I'm happy, but once a year, yeah, I take interviews and I meet people. And I meet people at competitor companies or places I might want to work. I may not leave, but a couple things happen. I become really good at interviewing, so the interviews don't scare me. Mm -hmm. Number two, I know my worth, so if I actually stay, I know what I should be paid. And and I would say when you want to talk about a raise, you got to know the facts. And then the third reason you want to do that is because the idea of a career is dead. We really are all free agents today. And free agents have to take care of their own careers and not assume that I can be at any one company for a very long period of time. And that is a mindset shift. That is a shift because historically people like find a good company you know, stay there, be loyal, be, you know, be faithful. Uh, but that that has shifted now. Well, it, it's funny. I mean, you know, working for a company isn't a, it isn't um, 
it isn't a covenant <laughs> or a contract. Right. <laughs> um, so you have and, – and, and the company – has this their main um, responsibility is to its shareholders and investors, not to the employees. And you are the only person who can manage your career well. And I think that starts with, you know, having a lot of awareness around what you bring to the table, but also what's out there and is available for you. Oh, wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we have a question from Twitter. What was that website address again? And listeners, thank you. It's anamazingconversation.com, anamazingconversation.com. That's where uh, that's where you want to go. And if you're hanging out on charvette.com, that link is in the blog post about Telvin. All right, perfect. And, so, and if they um, go to that site, yeah. by the way, you can click on – for a free appointment, and we will will someone and you just schedule online, and we will schedule an appointment and and talk about what you actually need. And if the free free resources that we have available, we'll give them to you. There there may not be a cost for some of the services that we offer. Phenomenal! Thank you for that offer, and thank you from Twitter. All right, uh, so I definitely um, want to talk about the interviewing, and you have a a, a great opportunity where you can help people uh, interview better. So let, let's talk about, because you've interviewed thousands of people and uh, certainly your history, um, yeah, I know you have some war stories, you have some funny stuff and all of that, but uh, maybe some of the things, the consistent things, maybe three consistent things you saw people doing wrong. We, are, we talked about the conversation piece, but any, anything else that was like glaring uh, that you saw that just people were not getting right on interviews? Yeah, I think the thing that really is that I see, and they're three, and they're exactly three. It's funny that you say that. That I say consistently, lack of research. Mm-hmm. People use that I know the company, I know the product because I use the product, but that has nothing to do with the company and how it works. And what pro- and, and they may have products that you not you don't know anything about. They may have particular things that they're working on that and how they're trying to change the organization. And it's important for you to get connected to that because you're going to use that kind of that information in your interview to show your interest and to show that you why you really want the job and we're just not another good place to work. And you set yourself up also because maybe you know how to do something specifically that's, that's, that they need, that you solve some problem that they have. And if you don't do the homework, it's really difficult to understand it. The second thing in that research piece is really understanding the people you're going to interview with. We all have different types of personalities, and I say – you know, all the time, I believe that people, you know, we get intimidated by the unknown. And yes. so if I can get the research on the company and the people that I'm going to interview with, then I don't go in, I don't feel like I'm going in cold, and so I can do better. And I can, I'm not trying to work on figuring out that person or, um, or the company. I'm focusing my energy on selling my best self. And so once you get the interviewer's name, uh, is it appropriate to Google them? Yeah, you definitely want to do that. The, and, and that whole idea around research is, you know, go online, Google the company, try to find articles on the company, go definitely Google the hiring manager. Again, I say go join LinkedIn. If you don't have a profile and you're not already using LinkedIn, because a lot of the information you want to know about that first hiring manager, a lot of these companies, the, the hiring managers are already on LinkedIn, and you can look at where they went to school, what their degrees were in, what kind of organized groups they're part of on LinkedIn, so you kind of know what their interests and passions are. And then the third thing, you can see what their jobs are and what the job, the, their career history. All of that's really important for you to create this picture of this person that you're about to talk to. Oh, Wow. This is so good. 
Oh, my goodness. And so if there's someone listening saying, I need to work with him, I need, he knows what he's talking about, his company, what, uh, what options do, do you have, a service that you can offer to people around interviewing? Well, we do have an interview confidence coaching program that we really practice helping people practice answering questions that really highlight their skills and resumes. And we also help them get really comfortable on how, how to ace behavioral interviewing. A lot of times people don't like those kind of questions. You know, now it's the tell me about a time, mm-hmm. when. And we get those questions really, you know, we work those out. And we also think about how we build out the we build out your how you want to deliver the interview. Now, as a as a former HR person, I will tell you the best interviewees actually somewhat manage the interview. Ah. And you manage the you manage the interview by making sure that you're clear about how you get your highlight, you highlight your skills and your expertise the things that you need them to know about you that is your best self. And so we help you put all that together. Um, we do it for people who are not in the Dallas, Texas area where I am now. Um, we actually do it via phone or we do it via Skype, which is what I prefer because I like to help you see. I want to see your face and I want to see yeah. your nonverbals, which is what people are listening doing. And the other thing that we offer with that, with that package is we do use a tool called Interview Stream, and we give you access to that for 90 days where there's a series of questions that you can kind of pull and pick for yourself, and you record yourself actually answering those questions. And then you could send it to colleagues or your friends and go, what would you think about my answer with that? And you mm. can do it from your mobile phone. So we send you a link, and you can do it from your phone or your desktop um, or your, or, you know, or one of your 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 iPad type devices. But it's really cool. We the the price for that's normally three ninety nine, but but right now we we have fifty percent off on that package. So um, I think oh, it's wow. really helpful for people who are going in, they're thinking about interviewing, they're they're on a process where they're about to get this big, you know, they're they're going to interview for this big opportunity. And by the way, I would say this last thing: we do this with senior executives of Fortune 500 companies. They think they need it. So I think all of us, wow. can, you know, yes. can use this opportunity. And, and I'm so glad you brought that out. You must have been reading my mind and reading my notes because I, I wanted to ask, are there stark differences between executives versus maybe entry level or, you know, are, are some of the processes and just the philosophy the same? Yeah, it's the same. None of us are, you know, we all are good. There are two things that are important to remember about a job search. We're all probably, most of us, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say all, right? Most of us are (laughs) good at working. We're not Mm -hmm. good at interviewing, and we're not good at looking for a job because hopefully we don't have to do that that much in our lifetime. And so we're not experts at that. And what we've done here is we've dedicated our, really, our focus to mm-hmm. unraveling what works and what doesn't work and taking our experiences from being on the other side and say, how do we help you crawl under that fence or crawl over it? All right. Because there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's correct. <laughs> more than one way. So what's the, uh, what's the website, the contact information around those that are interested in that interviewing coaching? Yeah, so it's an amazing conversation. That's a n amazing conversation dot com, or you can call us at our office here. And our number is one eight four four. That's a toll free number. One eight four four seven two two seven five four two. All right. Where can they connect with you online and just hang out with you online? I am. I'm on Facebook. Uh, there's a Telvin Jeffries Facebook page. There's also Telvin Jeffries. Uh, Twitter, so it's just Twitter, Telvin underscore Jeffries on Twitter, and I'm just Telvin Jeffries on Facebook. I do have an Instagram account, but I'm really, really not active. 
<laughs> All right. And certainly sounds like your time is taken up, so we, we understand that. We understand that with Instagram. Uh, and so one last question for you. The goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence. And we want to know what continues to motivate you. It's funny. I am one of those people who I am – this is odd now. I compete with myself. Mm, okay. And so I have – I, every year, I have major goals to kind of just trump what I did last year. And so I compete with myself. Um, and I'm, I'm a firm believer that God has invested in me a lot, so many things. Yeah. And so I, I go every year going, okay, how do I just, I, I got I to gotta hit at it a little bit more the rock because it, sometimes it's difficult, right? And I got to hit right. at that rock and go, how do I get more, more? Everyone who knows me well will knows that I say this consistently. I am going to die empty knowing yes. I have so much in me. Wow, phenomenal, 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 leaving everything on the table. Well, it has been great having you here and featuring you on the show. Thank you so much for just pouring out uh, freely of the information and the resources that you have, and we just wish you much more continued success. Charvette, thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Your thank you. Absolutely. All right, listeners, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to be back with our second segment. My guest is hanging out in the virtual green room. Yes, 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 Roosevelt Sargent, uh, the author of Victorious Underdog. I'm telling you, uh, you don't want to move. You want to keep, keep it locked right here. We're going to be right back after these quick commercial breaks. Don't you move. Don't you go anywhere. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Charvette will be back after this. Hello, we are 123jobzone.com, an online job search portal. We are user-friendly, and if you're searching for a job, with us, it's easy as 123. Step 1, go to www.123jobzone.com and register as a job seeker. Step 2, once registered, upload your resumes. Step 3, Get connected with employers looking for people like you who are ready and willing to work. Don't forget to follow 123JobZone on Twitter and Facebook to find out more about our upcoming job fairs. What are you waiting for? Stop by 123JobZone.com today. Good luck with your job search. IndustryBuzz with 3Gs.com. Join in today on the movement to bring integrity back to media. With one click of a button, you can disseminate your information right from IndustryBuzz to all your favorite social sites like Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, and to your email contact. Maximize your vision today. Plus, get the latest news, entertainment, and media. Need fashion or makeup tips? Looking for a job? Connect with us today. Want to connect with other business visionaries? Connect with us today. This site is for everyone, from teens to music lovers, from businessmen and women, industry professionals and performers. As a member of Industry Buzz with 3Z, you'll gain help promoting your vision. Industry Buzz with 3Zs will expose, expand, and keep your fan base up to date with all your happening. Members also receive free or discounted perks from various sponsored companies. So join the social network, expand, and stabilize your business. Connect with like-minded individuals. Need an artist to minister at your upcoming event? Look on Industry Buzz. Have a voice and submit your article to our e-magazine. Industry Buzz with 3Zs is the place to globalize your vision. Establish it today. Be heard. It's all on IndustryBuzzWith3Zs.com. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day. Available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.latiboyd.com. Are you starting a new business, releasing a CD, writing a new book? Consider Mitchell Productions for your web design services. Visit www.mitchell-productions.com for portfolio samples, specials, and package prices. 
Remember, a website is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. Check out Mitchell-Productions.com or find them at Facebook.com slash Mitchell Productions. She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading author, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right, all right. Welcome back, welcome back uh, to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. So glad to have all of you tuned in, listening in. Hey, I'm waving to those that are hanging out on the phone line. Thank you so much for listening from there. Those that are hanging out with on with us on Twitter. Hey now, thank you for hanging out with us. Those on Facebook, those on Charvette.com, those from my mobile app, we appreciate you so much. We're moving right now, right on into our second segment. Uh, you've seen me posting Facebook and Twitter, and you're probably saying, Victorious Underdog. What is that about? Who is that about? Well, listen, the wait is over. Uh, you're getting ready to hear about this a fascinating true story, really, of resilience and survival. Um, and I'm really excited. Roosevelt Sargent is here to talk to us to really share uh, of how he was able, uh, under really losing circumstances, uh, to maintain an indestructible will to survive. Uh, so we're going right now, run into the green room to bring him up to the mic, uh, bring him on air right now. Uh, Roosevelt, welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hey, Charvette, how you doing, man? Thanks for having me. I, oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. Man, I'm glad to be here. It's a, it's a privilege. It's an honor. I've been waiting for this. Absolutely. All right. So let's let's jump right on in. So I got to say, um, you know, number one, Victorious Underdog, uh, you know, that title is, is gripping. And then you have this phenomenal book trailer um, that's on the homepage of your website. And it's like, I feel yeah. like, okay, it's a movie. I'm like, when can I go see the movie? But I'm, I'm going to slow my roll. We're going to talk about the book. Right. <laughs> but right. but we can talk, talk about to the us movie a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming. It's coming. I see it. So talk to us about... What made you sit down and write a book? Well, um, really, for the last, I've been thinking about this book. It actually, t- it took me about a little over three years to complete the book from start to finish. But prior to that, I've been contemplating the idea for about 15 years, you know, and people that wow. know me and know my story. Yeah, just dealing with different people that know me on that level from way back, people have always told me, man, your life, it kind of reads like a movie, man, these different stories that you tell. I mean, I, I traveled the, the country sharing my testimony um, for a lot of years, and, yeah. and 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 that's what people would begin to say, man. This, the, these stories, sometimes they just, they read like fiction, you know what I mean? Because it, it's just been such such a roller coaster ride for me. So thinking about all that, that God has brought me through and and everything that I was able to overcome and get the victory over, and then looking at the state of our nation and all of our young people and all the things that they're plagued with, um, really, I think I've been hit with about everything that plagues our nation, plagues the youth of our nation, wow. so I could speak to all of it. So I was like, you know, I'm going to put this down, and, and you know, I know that, that we overcome by by our testimony. So I go ahead, I, I put that together, and, and it's really it's just my testimony. And um, that's my what I did, goodness. man, and I'm, I'm out here sharing with these young people. Kudos to you. A lot of times people go through things, but they don't want to tell it. You know, we come out and we all right and we living good, and it's like I don't want to either remember it or think about it. But um, yeah. I applaud you, you know, for putting pen to paper to say and, and encourage somebody else to be like, you know, you might be un, have under, um, you know, circumstances that are underneath the water now, but you can come up and come up over the water. So yeah, tell it. Yeah, thank you. And you know that. what? If I could be, yeah. oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, go, 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 go. I was going to say, based on what you just said, if I could be real, I, I didn't, um, I wasn't always comfortable talking about a lot of things. So uh, over the years when I sh- did share my testimony, there was a handful of things that I left out, some things that mm. I was just not, not comfortable talking about and I just wanted to forget. But you know what, I, I brought those things to, to light in this book and I just laid it all out on the table and it just, it was a real vulnerable moment for me. But it, it, in the end, it was it was like therapy for me, so... It was all good. And I have heard a lot of writers say that, that it was actually therapeutic for them to sit down and write. And then sometimes they say they'll go back and read what they wrote and don't hardly even remember, like, did I write that part? Yep, I've done that. Exactly. That's real. (laughs) 
Wow. And, and, you know, I think as a society, you know, to that point of not sharing everything, you know, with social media and all of that is we are kind of conditioned to, you know, share the successes, but not the failures, you know, share the right. high times, but don't say anything about the low times. So certainly, right, certainly exactly. applaud you for that. So take us back to your childhood and just kind of paint the picture uh, of how, you know, the story, how, and I and I almost hate to say a story because it was your real life experience, but um, how how your childhood was that led into the things that you had to go through? Well, it, it kind of starts off, um, my earliest memory was, was the day my, my mother and father got arrested. Um, I had, uh, both of my parents were in prison when I was young, and I, mm-hmm. I just had, I, I have these incredible defining moments that happened throughout my whole life things that were just burned into my memory and I never could understand why until I started this project but yeah I was about four years old and and that was the earliest memory that I that I have and and that was the day I I came home from school my house was surrounded by police cars and when I went into the house there was uh there was my mother my father and my auntie all standing there in handcuffs being arrested and taken away um and at that moment, me and my cousin had to go live with my grandmother, and that was kind of that kind of started the the downward spiral that I began to to take. Um, as a result of that, I, I ended up just misguided, misled. Ended up very young, being a parent at the age of 16. I uh, was heavily involved in gangs and underage use of drugs, and you know that type of mm-hmm. thing. Went to, went mm-hmm. through poverty, homelessness. You know, I dealt with bullying a lot growing up. And, um, man, just made a whole lot of, I was thrown into a bad situation, and then I made a whole mm-hmm. lot of bad decisions on top of it. So, um, you know, I, I really go into detail about all those different th- things in the book and um, really didn't understand until I was an adult how to use my story to help other people. So that's what I set out to do. Absolutely. And so for the bullying piece, because that, that is really, really, really uh, appears to be prominent now or either just yeah. very aware, we're very aware, and, um, you know, whether it was already there or not, but very aware. What advice do you yeah. give? Maybe there's a parent that's listening. It could be some teens listening around dealing with bullying and what, you know, what to do, because it feels like a hopeless situation sometimes. It, it's, it's, you know what, about bullying. See, bullying is like, it's, it's very it's 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 very serious in this country and it has been for a long time. So I don't know if you know any of the statistics, but there's about a hundred and sixty thousand kids that skip school every day in this country just to avoid bullying. And ultimately that ends up in one out of every ten that ultimately drops out. So mm. when you think about those statistics, it's really alarming. You know, when when they did the poll, they found over seventy percent of kids report that there's a bullying problem in their schools and the same amount of kids um believe that the, the the schools don't respond correctly they respond poorly and when they do respond it's not very effective so mm-hmm. for me what i do and the approach that i take is it's it's about it's about education we have to create programs for these young people so that they can see how serious it is there needs to be enough there needs to be a punishment strong enough to let these kids know that we're not playing most of the kids, when they report the bullying that they get, they get somebody, uh-huh. some some uneducated response that tells them to turn the other cheek or to fight back and this and that. How I dealt with bullying in my book was I learned how to fight and I started beating bullies up, but I didn't re- I didn't realize the monster that it was uh, turning me into. So, you uh, know, I started mm-hmm. I started to design different, you know, a different approach, and that's basically to educate. We need to let kids know that it's okay to speak up and say that that these things are happening and then when they speak up the adults that are involved need to get involved and the programs need to be set in place because a lot of things these things are happening in places where the kids should be protected now in school stuff like that and um on the way to school a lot happens you know there's there's a program that i'm familiar with in la called um stop the violence and they do this safe passage program where they're out in the streets in the communities making sure kids get to school safely because these bullies are out there. You know what I mean? That type of thing. Um, we just got to get involved. And and a lot of the things that I'm addressing are things that are preventable if if we pay attention and we take the necessary steps to be involved. Oh, that's good. Involvement. Involvement from 
everyone in the community because uh, it, it can't just yeah. be one or two people. It has to be everybody. Yeah, and we and we gotta let these guys know, people that we gotta we gotta educate, we gotta show them that the the outcomes of these things. Kids are dropping out, and kids are afraid to be themselves, and all that kind of stuff. We gotta we gotta show the the negative effects and the negative impact that it has on on our community, and then we gotta be serious about it in our in our in our schools, in our institutions. All we right. have to be serious and let them know that it's, there's a zero tolerance to this. You know, zero tolerance. Tolerance. We will not tolerate this. We will not tolerate this. Uh, listen, if you just tuned in, hey, hey, welcome. Welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. We're just chatting up here in our featured author spotlight. Uh, I'm excited, excited, excited uh, to have Roosevelt Sargent with us uh, on here talking about his book, uh, Memoir, Victorious Underdog. And uh, you have several reviews on Amazon, so I always love, uh, while I'm on the show, to jump over to Amazon. And one reviewer said, wow, this is a life-changing story. And Victorious Underdog Roosevelt shares a story about a man who's deep in crime by default. He's witnessed his parents and aunt live a life of crime and finally being arrested for armed robbery. And then this person goes on and on to say, but the the gist of it is they started out saying this was life changing. This was life changing. And there's several, all five star reviews. So um, listeners jump over to Amazon and check that out. Uh, where else can they purchase the book? Right now, it's 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 only available on Amazon, and I because when I signed up with Amazon, I had this three month exclusive deal. So at the end of March, you'll be able to get it from Barnes and Noble as well as Amazon, and we're working on getting it into some some of the small smaller mom and pop stores around the country right now. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And so, what do you hope people um, walk away with? After reading this book, are there key themes that you want to stick out in people's minds? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just I'm just an overcomer, and I feel like everybody can overcome. It's a state of mind. You know, um, whatever you go through, no matter how crazy it may be, you can always get up and pursue, you know, a successful life or pursue to be, you know, a productive citizen in society. And that's that's what's always been in my heart. You know, I always I always had this fight in me to be productive. And mm-hmm. I had a lot of things come against me. And talking about being all the things that I that I told you earlier, being broken, being in poverty, at one time being absolutely homeless and sleeping in homeless shelters and dealing with the gangs and the drugs and the teenage, you know, parenthood and all the things that, that I overcome. These are all things that people deal with on a regular basis. But no how no matter how many times you get knocked down, you can get back up and you can keep going forward. And and that is the really that's the moral of this whole story. Is wow. plagued with staggering odds. I had an an unquenchable desire to stand up. And that's how I was as a, as a kid, as a fighter. No matter how many times you knock me down, I just got back up. You know, and then as an adult, you know, I'm not out here physically fighting, but I am still fighting for my life. I am still fighting to reach my destiny. So that means anything, any opposition, anything that stands in my way, I know how to hurdle it, knock it out of the way. And you know what? I'm so serious about it that if, if I had to deal with somebody that wanted to physically stop me from getting to work every day, then I would have to physically remove him because I'm that serious about it. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a state of mind. Absolutely. Going hard absolutely. To be where you got to be. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we go hard for all this other foolishness, you know, go hard for something of substance and value and purpose. Exactly. Is what I is what I am hearing. And so um, you go out and you speak and you do motivational speaking. How could someone contact you? They're listening, saying, oh, gosh, he would be great for a youth, uh, you know, summit or great for a men's conference. How can they contact you around those speaking um, opportunities? Well, you can hit me up. I have my Facebook is at Roosevelt Sargent. Um, I also have a um, a fan page, of, which is Victorious Underdog. You can hit me up on Twitter, which is at Rose Sargent, the number seven, three. Um, my my uh, email address is Rose Sargent at Victorious Underdog dot org. Of course, you can go to the Victorious Underdog dot org website. Um, shoot, you want my phone number? I, you can get my phone number. It's eight one seven six five eight six four two one. You can hit me anyway. All right. There you go. And we have tagged on Twitter and on Facebook. And if you're hanging out on Charvette.com, 
you can go right there and uh, click right over to uh, his website, which give them the website address. The website address is victoriousunderdog.org. All org. right. And you've got to watch the video trailer that makes you feel like you're watching a movie, but you got to watch that. you got to check and, that and, out. And there is a movie we are working on getting the right pieces together to get the screenplay together and the movie coming Oh, soon. yeah. Okay, coming soon. So you'll have to come back and talk to us about the movie because I so could see that uh, watching the trailer. Yeah. I absolutely, absolutely could see that. What age bracket do you think would be good for, uh, a good reader for your book? Well, I get that question a lot because there's a lot. Of, I, I, I think the book is, is, to me, I think it's rated R. But a lot of people are saying these days it's kind of PG thirteen because what they see on on the okay. movies and whatnot. But but I feel like you should be uh you should be at least thirteen years old. Um, I had a parent talking to me the other day about her eleven year old daughter, and I told her there's some very um, heavy adult subject matter in this book. Um, and she was like, I, I'll, 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 I'm going to get it anyway. I'll just read it first and and then let her check it out because I mean it, it covers a lot of things that these kids need to understand, and they do. They understand, you know, they're, they're watching TV mm-hmm. and they live in, they, they go to public school. So, you know, my, my, my thinking might be a little bit old school when, I, when it comes to that because the kids are on a different level now. But right. I, for me personally, I would say, you know, at least teenage, teenage and up, 12, 13 and up. All right. And so as you, you know, all the things you went through in life and then at some point, you know, there was a turning point where, you know, you, you, you turned that victorious part really came into play. Do you remember if it was a mentor, if it was just something that clicked? Like, what? Do you remember anything like specifically happened where you turned the corner and was like, okay, this is not going down. My life is not going down like this anymore. I can I can tell you, I always there was always something inside of me that longed for something better than what I, than what I had, but mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what it was. I have when I was a little boy, my grandmother always spoke positive life into me. She always told me. There's something special about you, boy. You know, you ain't like everybody else out there. You got something great to offer the world, and and you're gonna be good for God one day. You know, and I and I, I never really, I, I just felt like something was different about me. I was around all these gangsters mm-hmm. and all these thugs, but I always had this softness to my my heart. I had this piece of my soul that wanted to be loved and wanted to love and wanted to be, you know, in a different place. And uh, right. I, I didn't identify with what it was exactly until I met God, until I came head on with with, with Jesus Christ. And when I when I opened up the scripture and I read that word for the first time when I was I mean I read it when I was little, you know, going to Sunday school and different things like that, but it really hit right. me when I was when I was about seventeen it hit me. And I and I remember and I talk about that experience in my book, so I won't tell all the details, but at that point I remember understanding what my purpose was. I mean, I understood that the reason why I always wanted something different was was, was to get me here to this day because mm-hmm. there is something more for me and it's connected with what God has. And that's when I began to, to seek uh, the things of God. And, and the more I sought the things of God, the, the more things became clear to me as far as um, what my purpose is in life. And, you know, I'm, I'm really on a mission to, to pursue that. Wow, the yeah. life-changing power of Jesus and his word. There you go. Yeah. Living testimony. So you are also uh, a Christian rapper? I was, yes. Okay. I was. I, I don't really do it much anymore, but I'm still okay. affiliated with a lot of that, that world. But I um, I, I, I was, yeah. When I when I first came into the body of Christ, I was. I was in, involved in a group called Christ Side and we toured the country and did a lot of things and and um we later went on to start a record label and then I then I was I had my hands in the in the production of several other um Christian rap groups. Yes, that's that's been a big part of my life and a big part of my testimony. Okay, and do you think that Christian rap can help bridge the gap between, you know, the streets and the church of just in a language this hip hop this kind of hip hop culture? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I absolutely do. I've seen it. I've witnessed it myself. I've I like I said, I've went around and I've seen literally thousands of young people 
make the change, and I know literally hundreds that that make the change and kept the change. You know, it's not like I passed yeah. through and they said the prayer and I never seen them again. But I know yeah. people that that I've seen make that transformation as a result to what we were doing. You know what I mean? So My it's God. definitely a powerful language. You know, and if and and I think I think the world is picking up on it now. But when I was doing it, it was a little it was a tough sale because the religious people were saying that may not be of God. But, I, but uh-huh. I know that people have recognized that this is a legitimate language to the young people. And these young guys that are doing it, are they're preaching the word, and they're anointed, and, they're, and you know what I'm saying, they're not really, you know, compromising with their lifestyles, and the power right. of God is on them to make change in people's lives, and that's happening. And, you know, I always say on this show, you know, we box God in. We we put him in a box. He is a creative God. So certainly the gifts yeah. of creativity, any any flow of creativity is, in, is, is I feel, inspired by God. So shout out there yeah. to all the Christian rappers. Keep doing it. Don't worry about the people that don't don't get the beat and all of that. It's not for them. It won't it's not it wasn't meant for them anyway. Absolutely. I 100% agree. What advice would you give to, um, let's say, a youth uh, ministry leader, you know, someone that's over the youth and the teens in their church, their local church, they may be listening. Any advice you would give them? Yeah. um, When I I used to run a youth ministry back in Southern California, and the the thing that I learned um, out of all that I thought I knew to do, Mm Mm-hmm. The biggest, the biggest lesson I learned was to listen to the kids. Mm. It's the same thing as as being a parent. Listen to them, talk to them, but listen to them. See what they see what they want. Find out what makes them tick. Find out what they love. And because what I found out, we were very successful because the youth were coming to 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 be a part of something that they owned. It wasn't they weren't yeah. just coming to hear me preach or see me talk or rap or whatever. They were coming to be a part of something that they owned because it was designed around them and they had input. And the input that they gave, we used. And, you know what I mean, they're, they're, very, um, they're very intelligent and they're very uh, creative and talented, you know. And that's the, wow. that's, the reason why, that's the reason why gangs and bad organizations are successful because they provide a sense of, 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 of belonging and family. So we've got to yes. do that as those that are youth advocates. We've got to say, I'm not going to just talk at you all the time, but I want to listen to you, and I want you to become a part of what I'm doing, and I want to become a part of what you're doing. Like being a, like Man, being a mentor. that is powerful. Uh, that That yeah, is works. powerful, and it, and it works, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And just like you said, the gangs, it's, it's the fellowship. It's really what, you know, when it yeah. boils down, like you said, the family and the fellowship uh, is is what they offer. What are What are some things when you were – uh, you know, operating youth ministry, the, some of the things that they, the youth said either that they wanted to do or the types of things that they gravitated to. Do you recall? They they, they definitely gravitate to um, pop culture, and that's another mm-hmm. thing that church people are scared of. But, but guess what? We just talked about it, man. God is created the, the, the most ultimate creation. He can do anything. So I had I started a hip-hop church, and... My idea of hip hop is what I know of hip hop from the eighties. It's rap, it's b boys breaking, and this thing like that. So there was yeah. a new movement called called Crump that hit the scene back in the day, and these dudes came up in the church, and I had no idea what it was. And um, mm. actually, when I I don't know if you've ever seen it, Crump and Buck Dance is really wild and aggressive. Um, yeah, but it yeah, man, that stuff gives me a headache. No, I don't understand. It, <laughs> but, <laughs> But they understand it, and they worship like that. And when wow. I got to know them individually and personally and know their hearts, and these are young people that are just looking for somewhere to go, now guess what? Most of the churches in their communities and their parents were saying, get that mess out of here. We don't want you to do it. Mm-hmm. We don't like it. God ain't in it. We can't have you doing it. And so then they're left out in the streets. Well, I just told them to come in my place, and I designed a whole ministry around them. And it was wow. their safe haven. And we had 100, 150 young people every week coming out there to be a part of something that they owned. My goodness. Woo, yeah. we, God help us to be able to be nimble and, and, and know the signs of the times and be wise with yeah. the signs of 
signs of the times. Absolutely. Tell listeners how they can, uh, one more time, how they can hang out with you online and your website and all that good stuff. Okay. Again, I'm on Facebook, and Facebook is Roosevelt Sargent. I have a fan page, which is Victorious Underdog. You can hit me on Twitter, at Ro Sargent. That's R-O-S-A-R-G-E-N-T, the number 73. My email address, if you want to email me, is rosargent at victoriousunderdog.org. And my website is victoriousunderdog.org. And if you want to call me, my phone number is 817-658-6421. That's my personal phone number. Hit me up. All right, hit him up, hit him up. And listen, we got a shout-out from Twitter, Carla R. Jenkins. Uh, Charvette, I know Crump Dance, the Crump and Dancing. All right, all right. Uh, We we ain't going to make you send a video in. (laughs) All right, all right. Um, And one more time, how they can purchase and pick up a copy of your book. Books are available right now on Amazon. You can get the e-book, Kindle version on Amazon or paperback. Um, so Amazon.com, Victorious Underdog, check out. After March, it'll be available um, through Barnes & Noble as well. All right. And you certainly can keep your eye out for uh, movie and, and all that kind of stuff. Certainly keep keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. And I love also yeah. on your website you have a, a page for um, underdog statistics. So there are some yeah. statistics that you, you know, kind of put – the numbers out there um, that are in some cases staggering so people can go look at that. All right, so my last question for you, my last question for you, the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate you. What continues to motivate me is is young people that that want the help that we're giving them. When I see young people that are paying attention, they're tuned in, um, and 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 they're really excited, about what we have to offer them, because I do this for a living as well. You know, I'm a, I'm a work for a nonprofit organization. I'm out there helping young people on a regular basis. And I get so motivated when somebody is paying attention and they're taking the things that we're giving them and putting putting them to use, you know. So I, yeah. I, I seek those guys out. There's a lot of young people that are they just they're disrespectful. They don't want the help that you're giving them. And we don't give mm-hmm. up on them. But I'm definitely motivated when I see fruit. I see fruit and I yeah. want more fruit. I'm, I'm greedy for it, you know. <laughs> I like that. I see fruit, and I want more fruit. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. All right. Well, it has been great having you on the show. Thank you so much. Uh, and Thank your you heart, so just hearing your me. heart. Oh, you're welcome. Just thank hearing you. your heart. And uh, we thank you so much. Thank All you. right. Let's do it again. Absolutely. I'll have you back. I will have you back. All, All right, right, listeners. That is going to be a wrap for today's show. Again. Uh, if you're hanging out on Charvette.com, and I encourage you, you to do that. That's my main website. You'll see great blog posts about both of our guests. Um, you'll see links to their website. So if you're listening and you missed you couldn't catch it and you didn't write it down, it's right there for you. Check it out. Uh, connect with me. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Charvette. Also, uh, Facebook, follow me on Facebook. My my list numbers are just about out. Follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Charvette, and just click the follow follow button. Uh, And if you listen to the show from a mobile phone, download. My mobile app is completely free, available for Android, available for iPhone, and available for BlackBerry, uh, free of charge. Go ahead and download that mobile app. You can catch up on all past shows and all upcoming shows, and it just makes it really easy. If you are one of those people who like to listen from the phone, that's a great uh, great thing. Or if you're listening in the archives and you're listening from our rebroadcast stations, um, still a great opportunity. Well, that's going to be it. Thank you so much again for stopping by. We're going to go ahead and wrap up uh, today's show, and we will check back with you next week when we have more uh, phenomenal guests. And we thank you for hanging out and checking out the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Bye, guys. We'll see you later. Live from Richmond, Virginia, you have been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Connect with her at Charvette.com. And until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. The Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Signing off.